senior mass communication major from Dallas, Texas slash Baton Rouge, depending on uh, the day. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and I identify as a heterosexual cisgender woman. And anyway, enough about me. Let's get into it. So for this episode, we're going to be talking about the LGBT. LGBTQ plus community from a Gen Z perspective, a Gen Z lens. And stay tuned because within 30 minutes of our show, we're going to have a live Q&A with our special guest, who are we going to introduce right now? So let's go ahead and start from the couch on our way up. Um, just, you know, tell them where you're from, who you are, um, anything special about you, you know, make it your own. Hi everyone, my name is Skylar Stevens. I am a sophomore mass communication major. I am a lesbian woman and my pronouns are she, her from Canton, Ohio. Hello everybody, my name is Kari Muhammad. I am one of the freshman senators here at Xavier. I am from Chicago. I'm a bisexual black man here in America and my zodiac is Aquarius. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hey everybody, my name is Jalen. Um, I'm from the south side of Atlanta. Um, my pronouns are they, them. Um, I'm a lesbian and I'm a cancer. Hey y'all, my name is Taylor. I'm Nola born and raised. I'm a senior psychology major. I am a bisexual black woman and cisgendered. And my pronouns are she, her. And my zodiac is a Virgo. Not too much. <laughs> hey, I am Ken Jones. I am a sophomore robotics and mechatronics major. I am from Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, I'm an Aries. Yay. <laughs> uh, my pronouns are she, her. I'm a lesbian woman. All right. So with that being said, let's get into our first question that I'm dying to know about. So... As we know, guys, Gen Z is, you know, dubbed as the generation that knows everything. We categorize everything. We're just, you know, that obnoxious new generation, I guess. So with that being said, how do y'all feel about labels? Like when it comes to identity and sexuality, you know, there's a debate about it. Some like them, some don't. What do y'all feel? You know, whoever wants to go first, go ahead and jump in. Um, well, I mean, I'll go first, I guess. Uh, <laughs> so, um, I do think that labels do give, like, a, a sense of community. So, you know, like, with the whole, you know, are you a lesbian or are you gay or are you pansexual or asexual, I do think that makes people not feel alone. Um, like, they're, like, not the only, you know, they're not the only person that that is like that. Um, and I think, like, when I was younger, I was, like, trying to figure out like what I fit into um now that I'm a little older I don't I don't really care anymore um about the whole labels thing uh especially like within the lesbian community like studs them femme like ugh, please <laughs> like who cares we just all like we just all girls kissing girls um I'm not like denouncing like because some people find security in, you know, being a stud or find security in, you know, being a femme or whatever. So, um, I just think it's to each its own. You know, if you want to be labeled, throw a label on there. And if there are people who don't want those labels, respect those people too. Because, like, I'm not a, like, when people be like, oh, you're a stud. Who said that? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I just teach each its own. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree with that part about, um we're reaching a point in time where labels are starting to be seen as more of a construct. And that's even, that's what they are. Take. Their labels are constructs to help us feel secure or safe or be able to connect with others. And so I feel like we as a generation are shifting into a place of not wanting to have a label of it. that just being the normative. Not, probably not normative I'll say, but that just being a normal thing it's a regular thing in society and I like that we're progressing to that part because me growing up labels I was always looking for a label to put on my back even though I didn't need one I didn't know that labels were could carry both positive and negative uh, tones to it so it was it was difficult to always search for one but 
as I'm older now, I'm like, I don't, why label myself? Everything is on a spectrum. Everything is different. Every individual is a individual with a sovereign mind, sovereign body. So what I do is not the same as what somebody else does. What I go through is not what somebody else has been through. So, yeah. That's how I feel too. I feel like initially labels were like a calm from the storm because for me personally growing up, I didn't really, I was in denial about liking girls. I was just like, you know, occasionally, you know, I like to hug a girl. I like to be close to one, you know, but like, it's not that deep though. Like, I was like, I was like it's all good. So like once I was securing it, it was like something I could claim my own. And it gave me like a sort of autonomy over myself and my identity and who I was. And I was like, yeah, I'm bisexual. Like I like girls. Like that was like what I like to do. But now, like Jayla said, growing up, it just feels like why attach a label to something when it just is what it is like mm -hmm. i like girls that's just what it is it doesn't have to be a big deal it doesn't have to be blown up and i feel like if we start removing ourselves from the labels a little bit more it will help us to normalize it and just be like there are gay relationships and that's okay mm -hmm. uh, i'd also agree with this i feel like with labels it has something really to do with us coming into ourselves early on like once you start being able to label what you are and label what you, what, like, what you feel, that's you being like, I'm claiming that I'm understanding who I am now. And so once people are very confident in who they are, I feel like that's when the labels become kind of unneeded in our lives. Like at the point where I am, I started early on knowing, oh, I like girls. I'm cool with that. I know I'm a lesbian. I know I'm gay. All that good stuff. And I feel like once people become comfortable with that, it's just like, I don't need to keep saying, oh, I'm gay, or oh, I'm this, or oh, like she was saying, oh, I'm a stud, I'm a femme. Like, it's just, I am. Mm -hmm. And I feel like labels is where we start at because that's where we feel safe at because we know we have that community. And then once we start reaching out further to who we are, we won't need to label ourselves. Mm -hmm. I think that people try to put a label on everything because that's what we're used to and that's what we're taught and that's what makes others just feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. But... Personally, I feel like no two people are the same. Like, you can't put us in a box, so there's no need to label it. Like, at a young age, I knew that I liked women. That's what I liked, but I didn't label myself. Like, all throughout middle school, it was just I like women, and people were constantly pressuring me, oh, so you're bisexual, oh, so you're lesbian, so you're this. And no, it was just, I just like what I like. I like women, and that's it, because I was still growing and figuring out myself so I didn't want to label myself at a young age I'm still trying to figure out what these things are I don't want to have to commit to it. it's like when you get to a co when you get to college and you don't know what major you are you're undecided I was still figuring that out for myself and you know that kind of makes me think about you know how do y'all go about addressing the older generation because especially I guess those that want to learn but don't know how to go about it how do y'all kind of walk them through you know labels versus no labels to, you know, to try to mm -hmm. help them wrap their mind, you know, around it. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say right now, it ain't gonna walk into me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, seriously. It's, it's take. It's not about just getting to understand. getting them to understand your point of view. It's also about understanding theirs and where they grew up. Mm -hmm. They grew up in a time where that wasn't acceptable. They grew up at a time where kids who were like that were bullied, beaten, mm -hmm. harassed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So. It's trying to get them to understand. Like for my mom, that was what a big thing for her was safety. Yeah. It was not even sexual safety, not even it was physical safety about her worrying about me. Oh, for at first being a black man, a black young kid, to now a kid immersing in myself into a different lifestyle is what she would say. But it's kind of like getting to getting them to understand that you are aware. I'm aware of these things. I had to tell her most of the times. I've thought about these things since I was. A kid like since I was in elementary I've thought about these things because that's where I was coming into the realization and I knew that there came obstacles with putting that label on myself or, or coming out and everything so it was getting them to understand your point of view understanding theirs as where they grew up and actually finding that connection to where I understand you as you as a parent want to care for me mm -hmm. but I need you as a parent to also care for what I love mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so from my own personal experience, it is definitely a long, long journey and like a, of just like being able, because like being a part of like this community, 
there are like a lot of labels, a lot of stuff that you need to know. And so as a person, me personally, I'm still learning about certain things. And to be able to teach that to like family, to really educate them about how, how who I am as a person, that also comes with a lot of stresses. And so when I was younger, when I came out to my family, I, I went head first. It was because like the way I was raised, my mom was like, and part of my friends, she was like, don't pussy put, just tell me straight out. Like <laughs> she was like, if you got something to say, you say it and you, we gonna move on from there. Right. So I was like, one night I was just like, okay, I'm gay. I took her out to dinner and we did that. And that was where like the journey started of, okay, well, did something happen? They always have that first question of, did something make you this way? And it's like, yeah. no, this is where I was, I was always this way. I'm just letting you know. And then it's become, it becomes, well, are you doing safe things? Did, are you like telling me this because you want to meet some, you're like you're meeting somebody? Like, what is this? And it's always going to be like, they don't know this. So you have to really educate them on, on safety. You have to educate yourself on safety. And it's just like, you got to be able to really communicate these things. Like, really open yourself up to teaching them mm-hmm. and informing them about these things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially because, um, you know, the our, the older generation has, they, they went through, you know, some, some different things that we, that we don't experience um, as much. So um, when it just came to me trying to educate my family, um, and they're religious, as are, mm-hmm. you know, most of our families, Southern, Black, Baptist, mm-hmm. that's just how it goes. Um, but uh, when it came to me coming out, um, in my nuclear family, it's like the my big three, I call them, is my mom, my aunt, and my grandma. So when it was me coming out, it was really essential that, you know, if I'm going to tell my mom, like, those three know, I don't care about who else knows. Like, I haven't really, you know, expressed it to the rest of my family because I don't care to. It's not their business. Um, and they see it. Mm-hmm. But when it came to those three, I did want to um, vocalize it to them. And um, it really is just about finding the connection and just building a bridge um, between those, our two different generations. Uh, when it comes to my grandma, my grandma is a boomer. Mm-hmm. So um, we're actually really able to find connections when it comes to like me being gay and um, her growing up even before you know civil rights and everything. And she says all the time, gay people have always been around. Mm-hmm. Like there's never been a time where she didn't know somebody that was gay but now it's just on a much larger scale so it's it's not that it's so many more gay people popping up it's always been the same exact number of gay people like that's what everyone feel, fails to realize it's just now that people feel um, a lot more comfortable about saying it and telling other people so um, just really you just really really have to find those connections because I'm still you know explaining the whole they them thing to my mom and she's a English buff, so she can't. She just can't get with it. She's like, "Day means a whole bunch of people." Like, <laughs> no, we don't. Because when you don't know somebody's gender, you say they. When you don't know if the delivery person who just dropped off your package is a man or a woman, you say, "Oh, the delivery driver just dropped off your package. They knocked on the door before they left." So that's not true. Like everyone is used they them to identify a single person in their life. So it's it's just about forcing them to understand that and um just not tiptoeing about it. You know, just be be strong and confident in who you are and if you don't have the answers for something, lead them to the answers. Like I don't know everything about everything gay in life. Like I just don't. So I'm able to be like, Mom, well I don't really know about that. Like she came to me one time about neo pronouns. Mm-hmm. Babes, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm gay, but I'm not. I, I ain't got over there yet. So, so, I was just like, you gonna have to look that one up. Maybe I can give you a, a YouTube video or something. So, um, yeah, it's just you know, just gotta find that, find that connection with them. Um, explain it in ways that they may understand, using examples that they'll understand. And and if they don't want to get it, leave them in the dust. Right. Kick them to the curb. China. And you know, you brought up a good point about, um, I guess, when it comes to the reasons why we see more uh, representation now. I think it's because of social media. And um, now that we're the generation of social media, I mean, what does the community look like? Like, what is the representation that y'all see on social media? Or how do y'all interpret it? <laughs> it's, it can be both harmful and progressive. It depends on it, but it really depends because through social media with the gay community, uh, unfortunately, at a young age, 
you're experience you're sometimes you're pushed into hookup culture mm. through social media and that bloomed through mm. social medias like kick instagram twitter etc so i feel like that can be harmful to the community and that was that's what really depicts us as the type of people who are there for sex and all that or guys who are too quick or women who are too quick that's not the case that really isn't how social media has plays into mm-hmm. like our daily lives nor does that nor does that nor does that depict our daily lives mm-hmm. But I do like that social media is bringing out more, showing lifestyles of your gay couples, your interracial couples, your bisexual couples and everything, and proving that there is a connection, there is a peace between these relationships. You know, with when black women, unfortunately, black women and bi men, there is a disconnect. Mm -hmm. So to see that there is are there are relationships that exist on social media on TikTok or on Facebook and all that it's nice to see that there is a world that exists and it's not all just gray clouds mm-hmm. if that makes sense mm-hmm. I, I think social media is a double edged sword for mm-hmm. sure um i think it's i think there's some good i i, I think there's some bad um i think when it comes to social media and how the queer community is portrayed um or I won't even say just social media, just through media, um, period. It can sometimes like just be really stereotypical. Like um, a lot of times when I'm watching like rarely, which is very rarely, you're watching lesbian couples on screen. It's not a lot of them. Um, they're always gonna number one. They're always gonna be white, mm-hmm. um, and they're always it's always gonna be like a butch and a femme. Like, that's really it. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I do think social media has opened up um, more, like, opened up an area for more representation because now you're able to see, like, okay, two masculine women together or two feminine women together or, like you said, a um, a woman, a black woman with a bisexual man because there is a disconnect there. Um, I do think that uh, social media has raised, now it's more chatter. Everything mm-hmm. is conversation like we were never supposed to know this much about each other to begin with um so (laughs) some of these conversations literally should not be happening because we shouldn't know certain things about people um but But that's just the way the world now so um i think there's you know like you said there's some good there's some bad there's some things we can work on there's some things that are just always going to be there because that's just what social media is i just feel like to an extent it's restrictive because of who's controlling the narrative like when we look at who's the predominant voice on social media it's not people who look like us and have our life experiences so when they're outsiders coming in viewing our spaces they're now caricaturizing the different aspects of our community Mm -hmm. like the takeover of aave and black gay culture Mm -hmm. the way that that has been like spitballed into Gen Z culture and TikTok. Yes. Mm-hmm. And the way that people just feel comfortable just taking different aspects of what made our community feel safe. Mm-hmm. Like it's not a costume for people to put on and I feel like on social media it starts becoming like this mask that people think will give them more clout or notoriety on social media. So mm-hmm. especially mm-hmm. Que- queer baiting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I feel like queer baiting. I feel like well, actually, first, can you clear, clarify what queer means for those that don't know? For those that don't know, queer, I don't want to say that this is the exact definition, but it's basically using a brand or your own, I want to say, platform as a way to say that you're down with the community or you hint at that you do this and that, that you kind of want to put yourself in this area that you rock with LGBT, but you don't say it. You don't, you never say it, you never clarify anything. It's, what can I give an example of? Billie Eilish. Harry Styles. 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 Harry it's they're trying to use our sexuality as a trend and it's not a trend people are on social media like um i guess being gay is in or being queer is in mm-hmm. that's not how it works it's a lifestyle I wake up every day i'm like this every day when the trend ends i'm still going to be a gay black woman mm-hmm. 
So there are like people who are in TikTok comments and they see a pretty gay woman, they're like, oh, maybe I'm gay now. Yeah. Or there's or nothing wrong. Not that serious. Yeah, like, yeah. There's nothing wrong with exploring your sexuality, but. Again, I'm a lesbian woman. I know that. So I'm going to, like, I'm dating other women. So if you're in my comments and you're saying, oh, like, um, I want to be with you or maybe I'm gay, I don't appreciate that because mm -hmm. I actually, this is actually my lifestyle right. and you are trying to joke. And, your right, you're wasting my time. <laughs> I'm looking for a real girlfriend. You looking for a fake girlfriend. There ain't nothing fake over here. Like, yeah, I don't like well, that. And to go back to the whole, like, the queer baby stuff, I feel like, when you have certain people who are just doing this because they feel like, oh, I'm going to get notoriety if I look like a certain way. I'm going to get this community on my side. And y'all aren't, but y'all aren't doing anything for the community. Y'all don't really know how it is to live like us. You, you don't, you maybe get like the one off comment in your comment section, but we may get that comment every day of our lives. Mm. And at that point, it's like, why do you feel, feel to do this? And it's also, it also draws back to like certain uh, neg negative things that come back to us because you may do something and they're like oh some people like that that's that's that whole community but you're not even a part of that community and you're negatively affecting us you you're you're putting other people on off our side but you're not even you're not even on our side you're not even in our community you don't even help us and all you're doing is bringing us down I feel like there are certain drawbacks to social media and people just don't care about that because they're like it doesn't affect me any and I feel like that's harmful mm -hmm. for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, how do y'all determine who's down and who isn't down? You know, like, <laughs> you go around and be like, mm, this is the checklist. Let me see if you mark everything off. You know, like, how, how does that work? How do you know who to trust? How do you know who to not? You know, patience, things like that. How do y'all go about that? You got to look at the cuff pants. <laughs> <laughs> you got to look at the combo, you know. Uh, you gotta have that. It's a symptom. I had a right piercing combo, you know, it's no, but it's... <laughs> if I'm looking at you, you got the same piercings I got, I'm like, oh, no, I'm not looking at you. Yeah, you got to be like, oh, I got the bees. I be wearing a lot of bees, like, I got the bees on my waist. I be having, look, I normally got the bees on my waist. I be looking at the bees on my waist. It's not the bees. It's a lantern in the pocket. You know, you got to have a hanging out properly. You got to have a hanging out properly. Yeah, yeah. Or, like, I'm 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 like, Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's going on here? Yeah. But um, but real talk, it's really about how you. It's really you gotta you gotta fill them out. Obviously, it's how you meet any regular person. You really just gotta meet their personality and listen to what they say. Cause some people, they think that you ain't listening to what they're saying or how they acting, but you are, and you're like, oh, I know the real you. Mm -hmm. Cause in the background, you're t you're calling me a slur. Mm -hmm. And I don't really like that. And so I know you're not really with it. Like, it's certain things that pop out at certain moments. And you're like, okay, I really, I understand the role you know. Definitely the moments where you have, like, a lot of cishet guys. Like, even though it's something small, but it's like, oh, no, nah, that's gay, man. Yeah, no, nah, 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 that, 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 that shit's zesty. <laughs> what do y'all know about it? Yeah. You know so much? I'm putting you in the box with me. Cause that, that means that means you're awesome. People always end up showing their true colors though. Like mm -hmm. especially um when it comes to because people will be like, Oh yeah, I'm a queer ally and then they'll draw the line somewhere. Like they'll draw the line at you know, they're cool with anybody being gay, but when it comes to trans issues, they like, oh, like, I don't, I don't, mm -hmm. like, what do you mean? You're like, you don't get to pick and choose what you mm -hmm. do and do not rock with in a queer community. Like, this isn't, like, this isn't something you can just, like, up and decide one day because, you know, there have been friends or what I thought was friends that I've had that were, you know, it was cool for me to, for me to be gay. Um, but when it came to, you know, a, a transgender person coming in the bathroom with us, they were like, they need to use the bathroom that, you know, that goes with there. And I'm like, well, like what are we right. talking about right now? Like, how you cool what with me? And not, yeah, that? like, where's where's the disconnect really happening at? So, like, for me, that's somebody that you're like, I'm like, no, just because it doesn't, doesn't necessarily apply to me. Like, it's still a whole community if you feel yeah. like that about 
you know, about the trans community, how do you really, really feel about all the other people mm-hmm. in the queer community? Mm-hmm. It also comes out socially, like people who like to be queer for fun when they're like drunk or under the influence, and then when you circle back, you like, hey, like what's that? We was vibing. They're like, oh no, like I just do that for kicks. I'd be like, gay for play. Yeah, gay for play. Gay for play. When you get drunk at, at, at a party, but when but I then when wrong, I see you on Monday and I'm like, you like, doing that? I'm like, well, can I can I get your number or something? You're yeah. like, oh, that that's not my deal. You don't do that, I don't. Yeah, what like I don't. Deal? You don't want to. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of reminds me, um, like when you were saying picking and choosing. I thought about how when it comes to Black Lives Matter and how like in the Black community, like people will be like, oh yeah, Black Lives Matter. And then we talk about black trans people, or we talk about, you know, black gay people, and it's quiet. You know, I mean, what do y'all, like, what is y'all standpoint on it? You can't pick and choose which Black Lives Matter. If you're going to be Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter, make sure it applies to all black lives. So that's black women, that's black men, that's gay black people, that's lesbian black people, that's trans black people. If you're going to support them, you're going to support all of them, or else you're not really Black Lives Matter, you're not with it. Yeah, you can't be pro-black and be homophobic or transphobic because there are black people in all of those categories. Um, that's something that's different about us than, you know, the the world is that we have a very unique experience as black Americans. Um, and as black Americans, we've experienced something that so many people have not. Mm-hmm. And so because we've had that experience, we should be sympathetic to all marginalized groups that's gay people, um, disabled people, you know what I mean? So you don't get to be like, oh, power to the people. Mm -hmm. But like you leave, you know, disabled black people out of things or you leave, you know, gay and trans black people out of things. Um, That's one of those things where two things can't be true at once. Like if you're pro-black, you really, you really got to be pro every, pro all black people. People, people forget intersectionality exists. Mm -hmm. Like, we are not we are not just like, oh, I'm a black person and I'm leaving it at that. No. I am a black person who also loves women. So at that point you gotta support all of that all of that that is encased in this black body. And at that point, you gotta really understand that supporting black people is not just supporting your view of black people. It is all of all views of black people. And I feel like well, why would you say this? Like, you don't hate all black, you don't like all black people. So are you really pro-black people? And it's just kind of weird to me that people are like picking and choosing who's the black people they can support, you know? There are certain, there are like a lot of hate crimes against trans trans black women in America. Mm-hmm. And people are like, oh, well they're trans. I don't know if we want to support, if we want to bring awareness to that. I'm just like, you don't want to, su- you don't want to bring awareness to the many many crimes against black trans women in America but let it be and I'm not saying this is a good thing let it be a black woman that got a hate crime at a Nelson line you're like okay well she's great I feel like that's no you gotta support you gotta really bring awareness to all of this that's happening Mm -hmm. because you're not stopping anything you're still hurting all these black lives Mm -hmm. The, the pro-black movement a lot of times wants you to to pick or choose one thing um like am i more like you're more black than you are gay and it's like that like why should i have to choose like i'm just i wake up just as gay as i am black every single day like they you know both things are are me so i shouldn't have to choose between which one i want to be or which cause i want to stand up for because you know they both go with me like i'm a part of both communities mm-hmm. And um, when you mentioned intersectionality, first, um, can you clarify that? But also, um, do you believe that there, well, do y'all believe there's a hierarchy of, um, you know, people that identify as certain things or their race and, you know, all together? Mm -hmm. Do you believe that it exists? Uh, So intersectionality is when you are, you have, you have a cross between multiple identities, like, you are multiple things at once. I am black, I am gay, I am a woman, I am all these other things at once. There is no hierarchy hierarchy in these things. You are all of this at one time. And so there is there is no one thing above the other. You do not choose to be black before you are gay. You do not choose to be a woman before you are black. You are this at that time. And I feel like 
you can't just pick and choose what you want to be to help fit a better narrative. It's like the whole concept of intersectionality is that all of these identities are interacting to create your own unique experience. And that when you look at who you are, when you break down these identities, it impacts your life socially, politically, economically, etc. So I can't, like, what we were talking about earlier, I can't remove my blackness just because I'm bisexual. Mm -hmm. Or I can't remove my womanhood just because I'm black. Mm -hmm. I'm always going to be all of these things at one time. So there's, it's impossible for it to be a hierarchy when they all coexist at the same time. Mm -hmm. All right, so on that note, um, we are going to start our Q&A. So we have a bowl of some questions that the team has asked and some of the audience members. So what we're going to do is we are going to uh, pass the bowl around. Everyone's going to pick a question, and we'll do you know, like maybe three or four rounds. Um, so these questions are supposed to be fun, funny. Maybe. Let's see. Maybe controversial. Let's find out. Um, so let's go ahead and start with Sky. <laughs> and let's see what we get. I hope y'all ain't asking nothing crazy. <laughs> All right. Just say the question out loud and your response. Have you had conversations with or about white queer people not understanding them still having white privilege while being queer? Mm, Oof. No, that's a, no, that's for me. Not a question. Just for Um, this is for the group. We can start first, and everyone can chime in if y'all want. I'm thinking about it. Go ahead, group. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was just yeah, like, like, like um, when it comes to, uh, they are really two different communities. That white queer community and the black queer community, they like it's it's really not the same. Like our experience and their experience is just totally different. And you'll talk to um, some white queer people who are like the ones who are like trying to fight all the causes, mm -hmm. and they'll be like, "Well, I'm something happens to me too. People do things to me too." <laughs> <laughs> okay, like okay, like they are gonna do stuff to all of us, like but. Mine a little different, like, <laughs> my, it, it is different being, you know, being black, whether it's a geographical thing, um, like, like being in the South, specifically, and being gay is very different from your experience if you live in the North, mm -hmm. so, um, I just think it's very different, and they try to, they, they, they try to, you know, make it the same thing, like, we're all gay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, like, it's like when you have when a white person tries to say, well, I have black friends. They try and use that in their identity. Well, I'm gay too. Right. Not the no, same. I'm a black person. You have black friends. We are not the same. Right. It's not the same. <laughs> it's, they try to they try to create. They try to they try to really create that connection. You know. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, we are 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 all part of the LGBT community. However, there is some things that just kind of differentiate us. And that's all right, you know? We can still be a community. We're just a little more space in that community, you know? But they're like, oh no, we are all the same. You have no issue that I don't have. <laughs> you will never have an issue I don't got. And I'm just like, no. <laughs> Honestly, the one thing I hate the most about it is like when they try to take our terms. Yes. Of DL, stud, um, <laughs> Like See literally, the white girl up there call herself a stud. Is the stud in the room with them? Oh, no. <laughs> 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 you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys, and it's also like y'all, y'all don't understand that we as a black. This is this is also a like this is ours. Mm -hmm. Like you can't just it's call you. First off, you calling yourself DL takes away DL. <laughs> 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 So let's just say that for okay. one. <laughs> two, two, it doesn't fit you. Like this is where like it comes into where that that differential like relationship between the black community and the gay community versus the white community and the gay community. Yeah. You, we have different experiences. We still set up different terms to to make ourselves feel secure. Not for y'all. Y'all don't have nothing to, to, to feel right. secure about. This this takes away someone that takes away some of the security in it. You know, if, exactly. If like you're if like. I, when I first became to hearing myself, I was like, oh, I, I identified as a stud and I'm becoming better in myself, you know, that was a really, a, one of the first things I did, like, becoming, a, like, identifying myself as a stud was like, okay, I'm becoming comfortable with my body and my clothes and everything that I'm doing. But then I see a white queer person in a dress that I 
never could have saw myself wearing, and they're like, oh, I'm a stud today. I'm going to be a stud tomorrow. I'm like, I'm like I took so me so long yeah, to just like, be so <laughs> comfortable in my own body and clothes, and you're like, oh, I'm going to take all that all that process away and strip that strip that identity of what it meant to you. And I'm just like, no. Not even just that, but have y'all talked to, like, a white gay man who yes. was very flamboyant? And he thought that his flamboyancy made him so oppressed. And he was like, like, I just can't turn this off. Like, I'm just like, I'm like, friend, you know good and well <laughs> that if you turn that off and you went outside in the supermarket, they would not know no better than anybody else. <laughs> yeah, they stripped the history from it a lot, like, a lot of times. Because a lot of, like, a lot of these terms and stuff aren't, like, didn't just come about just because, you know, they, they came from somewhere. Um, so for those to take those terms and mannerisms and all of that, that's just like, you know, white queers trying to integrate themselves into a ballroom. Mm. Mm. Ooh. Uh, Ooh, that's mm. I mean, Woof. Everyone, everyone can feel how they feel about it. Yes, it's supposed to be a diverse space, da 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 da, da, da. Mm. Whatever. At the end of the day, I just feel like it's just, you know, it was made by black people for black people. Um, and if you get an invitation to it, kudos to you. And if you don't, be okay with that. Like, you know, that's not, that that's an, that's a space where if you're invited in, you know, invited in the space, okay, we rock with you. Right. But if you aren't invited into that space, like, don't cry over spilled milk because it's not yours in the first place. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to do another question. Though we have time, we don't. But we'll do one more question. No, yeah, got it. How do you feel about companies profiting off of pride? Oh, these questions are good. You know, it's nothing like a good logging in on July. July, right. July. June, like July. June, June, June Pride June. Month. At, at 12 o'clock. Oh, no, don't, don't, don't add me on that, y'all. Don't add me on that. Are we bad gays? Pride <laughs> Month is... <laughs> no, Pride Month is every day for me. Pride is every day for me. Pride is Okay, okay, but let's okay, say that. Okay. I love waking up. They don't know Pride Month. <laughs> and seeing all the companies with the rainbows and all that in their profile pictures. It's nothing like nothing like a good uh, faking your, your, your support. Because yeah. guaranteed, once June is over. July 1st. Like, July 1st at 12 o'clock a.m. <laughs> Fine. Y'all didn't waste no T -Mobile, time. T-Mobile will change it at uh, 11.30 the night before. Uh, honestly, They're like the professor. They're crazy. Instagram had the rainbow logo for a while, and then yeah. after you got the update, and it's gone. <laughs> they be like, okay, enough allyship. That was... It was all because it was all a lie. It was all. It's all very performative. Mm. Um, they know what they're doing. I think it's just queer baiting on a corporate level. Mm -hmm. That's what. That's Seriously. what it is to me. It's mm -hmm. it's trying to get the community to understand that you 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 support, but support. guarantee the people at at your headquarters probably don't. Mm -hmm. Guarantee mm -hmm. the people on your teams probably don't. Mm -hmm. Guarantee the money you make in off of other people they don't. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to. See and look at a company and be like, oh, I feel the love, feel the support, I feel this and that. No, they just making money. Mm -hmm. They just there to make money. Sell. So they throw out some stuff in Walmart. You no, know, put them on the shelves. Yeah. They might, they might do a little sale on, on Xbox a little bit. Hey, I, I still buy the game though. But hey. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, it's just, it's just, another, it's just a corporate form of yeah. just trying to fake it till you make it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I just want to ask, um, I guess to put this whole conversation into perspective, is that what do you feel like our audience should know um, about, you know, the queer LGBTQ plus community? Like what takeaway do you want them to know? Um, or what advice do you have for people who are outsiders or for people who are discovering themselves? Um, first thing that I want to say is if you're coming into it and you're discovering yourself do it like educate yourself properly go to like the proper sources and do it safely you know it was a it's like a big thing with certain uh communities and people they they didn't have like that per proper resource like i up until my junior year of high school we didn't have a gsa in my school so before that it was just kind of like mm, go what you go what you want to and at that point it's very dangerous for kids because like you're just reaching out to whoever and hoping that it's a proper person to, to guide you. And, but, and that's where, like, certain hip hookup cultures can come from. Mm -hmm. Unsafety. Like, you just really got to be safe about yourself. Mm -hmm. um, I think um, what I would tell people that are, like, either coming into college or that, that are, you know, just young adults trying to figure it out is just um, take your time. Wait it out. Like, 
I never thought I would be who I am today when I was in middle school or high school. Like, I could have never imagined that I would look like this or, or love looking like this and, you know, just be so confident in myself. Um, just You just really do have to learn you. And once you learn you, you know, every everything just really does fall into place. And once you're you're learning you, you figure out who you are and you stay true, it, it really it will all fall into place. Um, you won't have to worry so much about this and that. And then once you're confident in yourself, can't nobody can't nobody tell you nothing for real. Like that's family, that's friends, like this my life. You know, once you really do get to a point of, of you know, being a hundred in yourself. Can't nobody really tell you nothing. So, you know, if you worried about coming out or how's my family going to accept it, once you accept it, all them other people, it don't really matter. Like, you know, you'll catch them on the flip side. For real. Hmm. Yeah. Any more last words? I would say um, something to take into those who are trying to figure themselves out or trying to at least understand um i would say that it's all it's about it's about being a hundred percent okay with yourself and it's not about your other people's opinions it's not about your friends because as a kid i was always worried about oh, what will my friends think what will my parents think yada yada this and that it's not about that it's about feeling a hundred percent comfortable and being you being your voice not regretting what you feel what you like what you're attracted to and that's okay it's completely okay like you said, people will fall behind if they are willing to be on that train with, like, as in support. But if not, then you're there for yourself. At the end of the day, nobody knows yourself better than you. Who's in your mind 100% overthinking every single action you take? You, not your parents. Not, they might be in a little voice in the back of your head. I know they <laughs> mind. But it's always going to be 100% you and yourself at the end of the day. And you decide how your life goes and you control how you want to be seen. Um, so my advice that I would give when trying to explore your sexuality, that's perfectly fine. Um, but when you're trying to pursue someone who's already confident in their sexuality, make sure you're expressing that you're exploring your sexuality because everyone is not comfortable with being your experiment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you're doubting mm -hmm. yourself, don't doubt yourself. If you like girls, you like boys, do what you want to do. That's what I would say. Because you know it deep down in your heart. You're just scared of the truth, and there's no truth to be scared of. Mm -hmm. Straight like that. All right, well, y'all heard it here first, so thank you. <laughs> thank you guys for tuning in for our episode one of season three of Adult Teen. Stay tuned for more episodes coming soon. Bye, guys. <laughs>